everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Anne from the Sussex Handmade Soap Company and along with my business partner Wayne, we run this channel and the Sussex Handmade Soap Company website and shop. And those of you who watched our video last Tuesday will know what is coming up today, but for those of you who didn't, today we are discussing allergens in cosmetics. Um, and today's video we are going to cover what the term allergen means when it is actually referring to cosmetics and cosmetic products. We are going to cover how to find out if a fragrance oil or essential oil you are using contains any of the 26 cosmetic allergens. And we're also going to tell you how to calculate whether an allergen that is present in a fragrance oil you are using is present at a concentration that is high enough to mean that you are required by law to list it on your ingredients label. And like last week, I have written a load of text about things I want to tell you because like I said last week, when it comes to things like allergens and ifras and labelling, it's important to get it correct. So I want to make sure that I am covering everything that I want to tell you because quite often I do videos and then I turn off the camera and I'm like, oh, I forgot to say that. I don't want that to happen in this video, so I have got notes. So if I do keep looking down from time to time, I apologize. I am just making sure that I am covering everything that I want to cover and everything that I think is useful to know about allergens. So that's gonna be today's video. And if it sounds like something that is gonna help you, then stick around and we shall, uh, yeah, get to talking about the allergens and I'm also going to show you our own allergen calculator which is going to hopefully help you guys to calculate allergens in your own products and I'm also going to tell you how to actually download a copy of our allergen calculator if you want to use the allergen calculator that we have put together. So in cosmetics when the term is allergens is used it is actually referring to 26 individual allergenic substances that are sometimes present in fragrance oils or essential oils. And it can be present in either fragrance or essential oils because essential oils are natural, doesn't mean they don't have allergens. They do have allergens, just like the fragrance oils do. There are a couple of allergens that are synthetic, so they won't be in the essential oils, but the majority of them can be present in either essential oils or fragrance oils. It is not referring, the term allergens in cosmetics does not refer to things like coconut oil or almond oil, things like that, which you may be a little confused about and think, well, hang on, these are nut substances, so they are allergenic. Um, the actual cosmetic allergens do not refer to them because things like coconut oil and sweet almond oil are gonna be on your ingredients label anyway. And people that are allergic are going to know to check your labels to actually see if those items are present. It is specifically referring to the 26 named allergenic substances that are relevant for cosmetics. And with that in mind, the 26 cosmetic allergens in the UK and the EU that must be listed on an ingredients label if they are present above 0.01% in rinse-off products or above 0.001% in leave-on products are here. These are the 26 cosmetic allergens that must be listed on ingredients labels if you are in the UK or the EU. And I just want to point out that on this list here, butylphenyl methyl propionyl, and I don't know if I pronounce that correctly, but it's highlighted here, is actually also known as liliol, and hydroxyisohexyl 3 cyclohexene carboxaldehyde is also known as lyral, and it is important to know that they are lilial and lyral because lyral has actually been banned for use completely in cosmetic product products since August 2019, and it is highly likely that lilial is going to be banned from March 2022, which means you cannot use them in your products at all. Any fragrance oil with lyral or lilial in will not be permitted to be used in your products products. Um, it is not the same in the USA. A lot of their fragrances do still contain lilial and lyral and if you are buying fragrances from the USA to use in products in the UK, make sure before you buy them that they do not contain lilial or lyral because if they do they will not get past a UK assessment. So those are two ingredients that you want to double check, triple check even, that they are not in your fragrance oils because there's no way you'll get past a UK assessment. 
definitely with Lyral in. And even if you've got an assessor that permits Lilial, because at the minute it is still allowed to be used, there's no point because if this ban goes through from March 2022, you're not going to be able to formulate new products or make new products with Lilial in. All you're going to be able to do is you'll have a small window of time where you can sell off any products that contain Lilial and then you're not going to be able to make that product anymore. So you're going to have to be paying to amend an assessment and add in a new fragrance oil. So really, there's not a huge point to actually formulating a new product from now that contains Lilial. So it's all well and good me showing you the allergens and telling you about them, but you may wonder how you can actually find out what allergens are in a fragrance oil or an essential oil that you are using. And generally, you can find this out from the supplier website. You can generally go to a website where you purchase your fragrance or essential oil, and alongside the product listing, there will often be a section where you can download documents. And in those documents, there should be an allergen declaration. If you cannot find an allergen declaration easily, then contact the supplier, ask them to forward it, because if you don't have an allergen declaration, you are not going to be able to use that fragrance oil in an assessment because the assessor needs to see what is included. So if you don't have an allergen document, you're gonna find it really tough getting a soap or a body product assessed. So if the supplier won't hand it over easily or you can't download it from the website, then I personally would say move on, find a different supplier who is more willing to help you. Because the last thing you want is hassle getting the documents that you need, legally need to have to be able to get your products assessed and sold. So once you have got hold of the allergen documents, you can open them up and you can have a look and they will tell you what allergens are present in that fragrance oil or essential oil and at what level they are present in. Some allergen documents like this one here for the Velvet Peony and Oud scent will only show you the allergens that are actually present in the fragrance. It won't necessarily list every single allergen with a zero by them if they're not present. This one here is just showing the allergens that are present, whereas this document here for a lavender essential oil is actually showing all of the 26 allergens and it is just putting an A for absent by the ones that aren't present and it is just listing the numbers, the percentage for the allergens that are present present. Um, it's just different ways that different companies record their allergen information. Either way is fine, so long as you've got details of what allergens are in the fragrance oil or essential oil and at what level they are present, you're all good. That is the information that you need. So now you have got the information on the allergens in, in your fragrance oil or essential oil, you need to know how to actually be able to work out if they are going to be present in your bath or body product or soap at a level that is high enough for it to actually trigger um, a need for you to pop it down on your ingredients label. And basically you need to list the allergens on your ingredients label if they are present at above 0.01% if it is a rinse off product like soap and you need to list them if they are above 0.001% if it is a leave-on product like a body butter or something like that. <laughs> so essentially what you need to do is multiply the percentage that is present in the fragrance by the percentage at which you are using that fragrance. So I know it's starting to sound a little bit complicated here but stick with me, it's okay, it is it sounds more complicated than it actually is. I promise you, it does. <laughs> so in this example here, benzyl salicylate is present in this fragrance oil at 1.6364%. So if I was using this fragrance oil at 2% in my recipe, I would need to multiply 2% by 1.6364%. And that would give me a number, and if that number was above 0.01%, if I'm using it in a soap, I would need to list benzyl salicylate on my ingredients label. And if it was present at above 0.001% and I was using it in something like a body butter, then I would need to list benzyl salicylate on my ingredients label. If it is present at levels below that, so if I'm using it in a soap and it was only present at, say, 0.005%, I wouldn't need to list it. It is only in soap if it is above 0.01%. So I wouldn't need to worry if it was lower than that. 
Now, that said, multiplying percentages by percentages is not as easy as multiplying just regular numbers by each other. It is a little bit more complicated. So, with that in mind, I'm going to take you upstairs to my bedroom, oh, I say, to show you some spreadsheets and do some calculations. Hey, wow, exciting stuff. Sometimes I wonder how I am still single. Let's go and have a look at some spreadsheets and do some allergen calculations. <laughs> so this is the fragrance allergen calculator spreadsheet that I have created to help me in my own calculations of how, how much allergen is present in my products. And the first thing I've done is up here, I have listed that it's a fragrance allergen calculator because then I know what it is. And down here, I've written that it is for rinse off products. I've also got one for leave-on products, and obviously in that case it would say for leave-on products. And I've put that in because it's very important that I make sure I get the right sheet when I'm calculating my allergens. The rinse-off products down here, I've got the limit of 0.01. On my leave-on spreadsheet, it is obviously 0.001%, so they are different. And then I've popped in the fragrance name. And today we are working with Velvet Peony and Oud from Candle Shack. So in this example, I would put that there. And then Fragrance Supplier, I've already mentioned was Candle Shack. So I pop Candle Shack there. And that is to make it really easy for me to reference which specific fragrance oil this calculation is referring to. And then I've written percentage usage rate. And this is very important. You need to make sure that your percentage usage rate is absolutely correct for the amount of fragrance that you are using in your recipe. If you don't put the correct number in here, nothing else will calculate correctly for your recipe. So make sure you are using the exact correct number. We use 2% of Velvet Peony and Oud in our soap bar recipe, so I'm putting 2 in here. If you, you were using the full 3%, you'd put in 3, and if you were using slightly less and going for a lighter scented bar, you would put 1. And then what I have done is I have subtitled here, I've got allergens, the percentage present in the fragrance, the percentage present in the recipe, and whether or not it is above the 0.01% limit for rinse off products. And then I have listed all of the 26 UK cosmetic allergens that are required to be labelled on your product if they are present at above 0.01% for a rinse off product. So that is basically how I have set up the spreadsheet. And then we need to work on how to work out what percentage is present in the recipe that you have created. And the way we do this is with sums and formulas. The actual sum you would need to do if you were trying to work out how much of an allergen is present in your recipe is the percentage usage rate divided by 100. And then you would need to do the percentage present in the fragrance divided by 100 and then you would need to times those two together and then times them by 100 which sounds a little bit complicated and when I say it like that it kind of is but don't worry we are doing it all in the form of formulas which make it a lot easier. So the formula you need to put in to work out the calculation I have just mentioned is equals, that's a plus, <laughs> we go with an equals because all formulas start with an equal sign and then you need to open your bracket and you need to go with your percentage usage rate. So you click here and it will highlight the cell B9. And the reason we are going with cell numbers instead of actually me just writing a two in there is that if I decide to change my amount from two to 3%, it will automatically change it for me if I've gone with a cell number here. Whereas if I had written two here, I would need to manually change everything. So we always use cell numbers because it makes it so much easier if you just wanna change everything in future. So. B9 or 2, we need to divide by 100 and then we close the bracket. And then we need to times that, so we go with times and we need to open a bracket again and we need to times it by the percentage present in the fragrance. So for this one here, this alpha isomethyl ionone, don't know how that's pronounced, but alpha isomethyl. So you click there and obviously at the minute there's nothing in that cell but that will change when we add figures in later. For the moment we just need to worry about the formula. So it has taken cell B13 
and then we divide that by 100, then we close our bracket, and then we times the whole lot by 100, and hit enter. And it is as simple as that for the actual formula. Now, to get that formula to copy all the way down, you generally would often just drag it down like this. However, this doesn't work in this case because we want B9 or 2 to stay static. We want it to remain the same. And by dragging down, it's actually put it to B10, then we go down here and it's changed it to B15. So that is wrong. So we delete that. The way to make that B9 figure stay static is to just put a dollar sign between the B and the 9. And then we should be able to drag it down successfully. And if we look, it is now staying as B9. The B15 is changing, which is good because it needs to, because it is obviously that one um, amyl, cinnamol, alcohol that we would need in this case. So it has changed the B15. Everything else has changed, but the B9 figure has stayed static, which is exactly what we need it to do. And now we need to work out if the percentage present in the recipe is above the 0.01% limit. And you could just look in this column for it to tell you, and it would tell you, but it's a lot easier to pop in a little formula so you can quick and easily see for quick, easy reference whether it is above the limit or not. And the way to do that is with an if command. So we start with an equals, because it is another formula, and then we open our brackets, and we want to know if this column here, the percentage present in the recipe, is greater than 0.01%. So we highlight this cell here, and it's automatically telling us cell C13, which is correct. So if cell C13 and greater than, which is this little symbol here, if it's greater than 0.01, then you need to do a comma and then open some quotation marks and put yes, then close those quotation marks, then write another comma, then open up those quotation marks again and write no, then close those quotation marks, close the brackets and hit enter. And it tells me there's an error. Why is it telling me that? What have I done wrong? Oh, I didn't write if. I did not write if. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> I missed out the crucial part. It is an if command and I didn't write if, so I'm just going to do that whole thing again just to actually, so you can see me doing it correctly. Right, so let's try again. Equals, now you write if, don't forget to write if. <laughs> if, open brackets, C13, this cell here, is greater than, greater than 0.01 comma, quotation marks, type yes, close quotation marks, add a comma, open quotation marks, type no, close quotation marks, close brackets, cross your fingers, hit enter, there you go. Now that I've remembered to actually put the if command in, it has worked. And then you just need to drag this down and that will now be applicable to every line on your spreadsheet. And it is that easy. Obviously, you might make the odd little mistake here, that here and there, that's easily fixable if you actually double check your workings. <laughs> um, and now we need to just kind of show you it working because it's all very well and good me showing you this, but at the minute it's just a lot of zeros and a lot of no's. So Velvet, Peony and Oud, let's actually populate this spreadsheet with the correct allergens for Velvet, Peony and Oud. So for that, I would switch across to my PDF document which is the allergen document for the Velvet, Peony and Oud fragrance soil. And I can see here that benzyl salicylate is present at 1.64%. So I go back to the sheet, I find benzyl salicylate, the percentage present in the fragrance, 1.64%. So we type in 1.64, enter. And as you can see, all the calculations have now been done for me. It has done that calculation of, you know, 
the, the 2 percent times the 1.64 percent it's worked it out for me and it's told me the answer is 0 0.0328 which is above 0 0.01 so it has highlighted it in red and said yes it is that needs to be included on your label let's quickly zip through the others so geraniol and linalool both at 2 percent so geraniol 2 percent linalool 2 percent so both of those again would need to be included on the labeling Back to the sheet, alpha isomethylione, 0.8%. This one here at the top. So 0.8%. So 0 0.8, yes, that needs to be included. And the last one, citronellol, 0.57. And again, they are all above. Now let's imagine that actually there was some benzyl alcohol in there. I just want to show you that it does work for nose as well. Let's imagine there were 0.002% of benzyl alcohol. There you go. It gives you the calculation, but it doesn't highlight in red because the answer is no, so it doesn't need to be included on your labelling. And really, that is how I work out my allergens. Obviously, when I've done an allergen calculator like this, I save it, I write what it is, I give it a file name like Velvet, Peony and Oud allergens, and then I save it in my product information file for quick, easy reference. And that is basically how I calculate my allergens. Um, if we were to change it to a leave-on product, just to show you, leave-on the only things that would change is, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, I would change this here to, is it present above 0 0.001? And then in here, I would change it from 0 0.001 to 0 0.001. I'm getting, you know what I mean, I'm getting confused with my zeros. But anyway, 0 0.001, and then I would highlight here, drag it down to overwrite and it would automatically change everything. And then if we had something that was present at 0 0.05, that is exactly 0 0.001. But if it was 0 0.051, you can see it changes to a yes, because it is present at above 0.001%. So I hope that makes sense. Um, that is my allergen calculator and now I'm going to take you back downstairs for the rest of this video. So I hope that that has um, not confused you all too much. I hope it has shown you how to calculate allergens and work out if they are going to be present in your recipe at an amount that is going to trigger the need for you to list them on your ingredients label. And remember that is above 0.01% for rinse off products and it is above 0.001% for leave on products. And there are allergen calculators online that will do this for you. I just prefer to use my own spreadsheet because I prefer to not have to rely on someone else's site to work out my own maths. Um, because if someone else's site is down um, or I can't access the allergen calculator online and I don't know how to do it myself, I'm going to be stuck. So I prefer to rely on myself for things like this because I have the confidence that I can do it. You know, some people don't. I know Wayne, and I know he won't mind me saying this, Wayne would massively struggle with doing something like this because maths isn't his strong point. I am more mathematically minded than he is. He is more creative than me. So it's just, you know, it's what personalities are like. So if you want to use our allergen calculator, I am actually going to pop a blog post up over on our website here. And in that blog post, I'm actually, hopefully, if I can get it to work, <laughs> going to link to the allergen calculator for rinse off products. And I'm going to link to our allergen calculator for leave on products as well. And if you want to, you should, I say if I can get it to work, be able to download our own allergen calculators so you can use them yourself within your own recipe making if you don't feel quite confident enough making your own spreadsheet or you just want to quickly and easily download ours for your own personal use. So that is something we have done for you as well. Um, and hopefully it'll help. Hopefully. If it doesn't help then, oh well, never mind. <laughs> 
Um, thank you for watching today's video. If you do enjoy this content and you want to know a little bit more about the legalities behind running a bath and body and cosmetics business here in the UK, then do hit that subscribe button because we will be adding more videos like this over time. Um, if you do enjoy our content, please give us a like. And if you have got any questions at all, do pop them down in the description box and we will do our best to answer. We are a little behind at the moment. The questions and comments, we are taking a little longer than usual to reply to them, but we will get back to you at some point. <laughs> Thank you for watching today's video and we will see you on Friday for another soap making video. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.